Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, I'm going to be making several cards using some products from Brutus Monroe. Brutus Monroe is now available at scrapbook.com and scrapbook.com sent me several of their products to create with. So in this video, I'll be showing you the products I received, which range from stamp sets to stencils, embossing powders, glazes, and chroma mist. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these products. First off, I have the Gnome Pun Intended stamp set and the matching die set. So here's what the stamp set looks like. There are two gnomes in this set and there are a few sentiments. So the sentiments say, you know me so well. There's gnome time like the present. Gnome pun intended. And oh gnome, I forgot your birthday. And then there's also the matching dies that are available. The next stamp set that I have is this large stamp set. It is called Glorious Garden. It has this large floral stamp. And then it also has several sentiments. So some of the sentiments for this stamp set include, we're better together, you are a blessing just for you, sending a cheery hello, and thanks for being a good friend. There are matching dies available to cut this floral stamp out, but I don't have them to show you. I will put a link down in the description box in case you're interested, as well as links to all of the products that you see in this video. Next, I have this watercolor rainbow six by six paper pad. I love the papers in this paper pad. So if you like watercolor or rainbow colors, look how beautiful and vibrant these patterns are. You do get two of each one of the patterns that you see here. So you get 12 of each pattern. There are a total of 24 sheets in this paper pad. Next, I have the Heart Ray Stencil. It is a six by six stencil with all of the rays with the heart in the middle. And Brutus Monroe has several different stencils available at scrapbook.com. And here is another one. This is a mini slimline stencil. You can see the measurements listed on here, 3.125 by 6.25. This is called the Sunrise Mini Slimline Stencil. So it's perfect for a mini slimline size card. You can see all the beautiful detail in this stencil. I can envision this stencil being used for Christmas and having it be used as snowflakes, but you can definitely use it for any occasion and you'll see me work with this today. Next, I have a pack of the specialty ink pads. These are four mini ink cubes and they contain four different inks. So you have first the disappearing ink. This is used for no line coloring. You also get embossing ink, so if you wanted to do any heat embossing with any of their embossing powders, you can use this ink. There is also the Raven Black Detail Ink, which can be used with alcohol markers and it's permanent when dry. And then there's also the Alabaster White Pigment Ink. Brutus Monroe also has several embossing powders. So I have four of them, but there are all different colors on their website. These are fine embossing powders. This is the Gilded. It is gold embossing powder. And then this one is the Alabaster, which is white embossing powder. I also have the Rose Gold, which is beautiful when this is heat set. And I'll show you that in my video today. And then I also have the Raven embossing powder, which is the black embossing powder. I also have these two ounce jars of the Brutus Monroe glitter glaze. There are so many different colors of this glitter glaze. You can find them all on scrapbook.com's website, but I have two of them. I have the grape, which is a beautiful sparkly purple glitter glaze. I also have the Alabaster Glitter Glaze, which is like a clear glaze with lots of sparkle and glitter. These glazes work on different surfaces. You can use them on paper, glass, ceramic, wood, metal, as well as fabric. And I'm going to use them today on my cards and using them with my stencils. 
Next I have the Brutus Monroe Chroma Mist and I have three different colors. I have it in pink, lilac, purple, and coral. There are so many different colors of this Chroma Mist on the scrapbook.com website so make sure you check out all of the colors. This Chroma Mist is a dye-based ink. You can spray it on your projects. It is water reactive. You can use it to create colorful backgrounds. You can do splatters of ink on your projects, even watercoloring your stamps. And I'm going to show you a few different ways to use it with my card making today. So for my first card, I am using a piece of watercolor paper and I'm inking up the large floral stamp from the Glorious Garden stamp set with some of the embossing ink. I am going to emboss this and heat set it. I'm going to do some fun techniques with the chroma mist for this card. So after I ink that up, I'm going to use the Raven embossing powder and just sprinkle that over top of my card layer. And you can see that it is a black embossing powder. I'm just dusting off the excess and then I'm going to use my heat tool and heat set that. It does take a little bit longer to heat set because it is a very large stamp as you can see. And also notice that I stamped it off the edge of that card panel. That card panel is four and a quarter by five and a half and I just stamped it off the edge. Now I'm putting that back in my Misty and I'm positioning a sentiment there at the top. So I use my powder tool to put some powder on there and then I ink that up with the embossing ink and then press that down really well. It does take a few times just to make sure you get a really good impression because that watercolor paper is pretty thick. Then I do the same process, sprinkle on the raving embossing powder and then I heat set that. So now I'm going to show you how to add some really nice color to your card if you don't like to color. This is such an easy way to add some color to that card panel. So I'm spraying on some of the Chroma Mist. I have the coral at the top, then I have the pink and then the lilac purple. And I just spray that down on my mat. And then I take my watercolor cardstock, I flip it over so that the stamped image is facing down into the ink and I just press that down. And look how pretty all of those colors are when they blend together and it just adds a nice touch of color to that card front without having to do any coloring. I had a few small little clumps of ink or puddles of ink along the edges so I just took a paper towel and just ran it across the bottom just to smooth that out. And then with the excess ink that I had left over on my mat I just took another card panel and just put it in the ink. That way I'm not wasting all of that ink that's on the mat. Now because I want to work with this panel right away I'm using my heat tool and I'm drying it. If you don't have a heat tool you will have to let these panels sit. Um, for a little while until they're completely dry before you work with them. Now if you want to add another layer of ink on top of what you already have, you will need to dry the panel first. Once it's dry, you can put the panel back in the ink to add some more layers. You can continue to add more layers of ink as long as you dry in between um, applications. So you can see I'm just adding more ink to that background and then I'm taking my heat tool and I'm drying it again. So this is just showing you all of those three colors kind of mixed together. If you wanted just to use one color and make a pretty um, design on the background, you can totally do that. You can also use these chroma mists to spray or sprinkle on some of that ink onto your panel. So here I just unscrewed the top of the lilac purple and I just flicked on some of that purple onto that background just for a splattered look. So next I want to show you how you can actually watercolor with the Chroma Mist. So here I have another panel that I heat embossed just like the previous one. I sprayed on my mat the three colors of the Chroma Mist and I'm just taking a water brush and I'm dipping it in the ink that I sprayed on my mat and I'm bringing it over to my stamped image and just watercoloring my stamp. Now if you don't have a water brush you can just use a paintbrush, dip it in water so that the bristles are wet and then put it on into the ink and then color it 
color your stamp up. So this is a fun technique just if you want to use the different colors of Chroma Mist to color up your stamped images and it's so easy. I think the hardest part to this is just deciding on what colors you want to color up the flowers. So Brutus Monroe has so many different colors of Chroma Mist available on scrapbook.com's website, so be sure to check out all of the different colors. Now, when I get down to the leaves, obviously I wanted to color my leaves green. I did not have any of the green colors of Chroma Mist on, on hand. So what I did is I just used my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pen. I brought out some greens and I colored up those leaves. But if you happen to have any of the colors of green Chroma Mist available, you can definitely use that. Once I finished coloring, I just used a paintbrush and dipped it in the ink that is on my mat and I flicked some of that ink onto the background to create a splattered look. And I did use all of the various colors. I put some green on there from my Zig clean color real brush marker and then the purple pink and coral of the chroma mist. So here's one way you can use the alabaster um, glitter glaze. I'm just taking a paintbrush and I dipped it in the glitter glaze and I'm painting it on my stamped image and that's just adding some glitter to these leaves or to my stamp so you can add glitter to any parts of your stamp just by using a paintbrush and dipping it in to the alabaster glitter glaze and the nice thing about the alabaster one is it's clear so it's not going to distort the color that you already have on there you can see how bright that chroma mist is that I I paint um, that I painted onto my stamp and that glitter glaze is clear so it's just adding a little bit of glitter. So I cut my floral stamp down to three and three quarters by five and I added it to that watercolor background that I created um, and that measures four by five and a quarter and then I just added that to a white A2 size card base. I didn't have to worry about finding a piece of pink cardstock to match the color in the flowers for my card layer. I just used the watercolored panel that I created. And for the other panel, I cut that down to four by five and a quarter and I'm gonna add that to a piece of white cardstock that measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I'm going to add that to a piece of cardstock that I took out from the Roses uh, cardstock pad from scrapbook.com. And that Roses cardstock measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'll add that to an A2 size card base. And to finish off this card, I'm going to add some of the silver scrapbook.com pops of color to this card. And then that will complete this card. I love how easy it is to create beautiful, colorful backgrounds with that Chroma Mist by Brutus Monroe. So moving on, I am going to be using that large floral stamp again from the Glorious Garden stamp set. I cut down a piece of the watercolor paper from the six by six paper pad to four by five and a quarter. I am going to do some embossing. So I'm using my embossing ink to apply ink to that large stamp set and I'm going to ink up the stamp and stamp it on to the watercolor paper. I am going to be doing some heat embossing using the gilded embossing powder which is the gold embossing powder so that's what you see here so I'm going to sprinkle that on to my paper and cover that stamp and that sentiment up really well and then I'm going to heat set that and again it's going to take just a little bit longer just because it's such a large stamp but you'll begin to see the beautiful gold show up once that's heat set. That was the gilded embossing powder on top of the light blue watercolor paper. Now I'm using the light green watercolor paper. I cut it down to the same size, four by five and a quarter, and I'm doing the same process by inking up the stamp with the embossing ink, and at this time I'm going to use the rose gold embossing powder. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle that rose gold. It's a beautiful pink color. You can see how pretty that looks already on that green background. I'm going to save that excess, put the excess back in the jar, and then I'm going to heat set that, and you can see how pretty that rose gold is. 
as I'm heat setting this, I did notice that there were some parts of that stamp that it did not apparently ink up because it's such a large stamp. It's really hard to know, especially when you're using the clear ink, if you're getting everything onto the paper. So I just put my paper back into the Misty, inked it up again, and then put that rose gold right back on there and then heat set it again. And I knew where to place the paper because I kept an eye on what measurement I placed the paper in the Misty to begin with. So I was able to line it up a second time. And then I went ahead and heat set that and it worked out perfectly. So you can see that beautiful rose gold embossing on that card layer. So I want to quickly show you what these two embossing powders look like on white. So this one is the rose gold on white. You can see how pretty this is once it's heat set. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you the gilded. Again, this is the gold color. You can see how pretty this one is on the white. Look at all that shine. So pretty. I'm going to go ahead and finish up these cards with the card panels that I created. So this is the scrapbook.com Jules A2 size paper pad and I just took a green and a blue out of there. Those papers measure A2 in size but I did trim it down to 4 and an eighth by 5 and 3 eighths and I'm just going to layer each one of those panels on the solid cardstock and then I'm going to add each of those panels to a white A2 size card base. And then I'm going to add some pops of color to the front of these cards. So the blue card has the ocean waves pops of color. And the green card has the holly green pops of color. You will need to let your cards lie flat so that these dry. You don't want to handle them until they are dry. Otherwise, the pops of color will smear. So here's a look at my final cards. I love that watercolor paper with the look of that embossing powder heat set on top of it. For my next card, I'm using the Brutus Monroe Mini Slimline Sunrise Stencil. So I'm using the scrapbook.com mint tape and I'm just taping it down to my mat, which I'm also using some watercolor paper. I'm going to be using the Chroma Mist. And you want to make sure that you are using a thicker paper. Again, I'm using watercolor paper just because it's heavier and it will hold up this ink better than just a very thin cardstock. So what I'm doing is I am using the Chroma Mist and I'm spritzing it in the Alabaster Glitter Glaze. Remember, this is the clear glitter glaze and I'm actually using that glitter glaze to make my own colors using the Chroma Mist. So I sprayed some of the coral, I also sprayed some of the pink, and then I sprayed some of the lilac purple. So now I have three different colors of glitter glaze using that Chroma Mist. And then I'm going to apply that glitter glaze in sections here on my stencil. So I'm putting the purple at the very bottom and then I'll put the pink in the middle and the coral at the top. So I'm just using a palette knife to apply that glitter glaze to my stencil. So once I've applied it with my palette knife, I'll then use my scraper tool and I will pick up any of the excess and this glaze is very easy to clean off. Just make sure you clean your tools right away so that it doesn't dry. You can just run them under water to remove all the glaze and then wipe them down with a paper towel. So I'm going to be using some Spellbinders Mini Slimline Nesting Dies to die cut out my stenciled background. So I have two packs of the nesting dies. I have a pack A and a B, and I'm going to use both of them to cut out my layers. I'll be using the second largest mini slimline nesting die from each one of the packs to cut out the stencil background and one of them to cut out a black piece of cardstock to layer together. The sentiment on my card, I'm going to be using the photo play, say it with stamps, thank you stamp. It's a very large, bold stamp. I'm going to ink it up with the Raven Detail Ink and stamp it down. Now, I want to mention that it did take me a few times to get a clear impression, but I am using a thicker and textured paper, so that was 
expected. But nevertheless, I was able to get a good impression after stamping it down a few times. I am gonna take out the matching dies and die cut that sentiment out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these card layers together. I am going to glue down the stenciled pattern onto the black cardstock. And my sentiment is gonna go right in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this sentiment down and then that panel is gonna go on a mini slimline card base and that measures three and a quarter by six and a quarter. To finish off this card, I'm going to be using the scrapbook.com pops of color in the silver color and I'm just going to add a few of the pops of color onto the stenciled background. Now keep in mind after you add your pops of color they will be wet so make sure you let your card dry flat before you start handling it. So take a look at how pretty all of that glitter shows through all of those beautiful colors of that chroma mist. So for my next card, I'm gonna be using the Heart Rays stencil. I do spray the back with Pixie Spray and then I add it to my cardstock. I'm also using some magnets just to hold that stencil down to my magnetic platform. That paper is cut to about six by six inches to fit the size of the stencil. And I'm gonna be using the scrapbook.com yellow inks to do some ink blending. So the colors that I'm using are honeycomb. This is the darkest ink. I'm gonna put that right around the closest part to the heart, which is the center of that ray stencil. And then I'm gonna come in with the third color ink, which is the daffodil, and I'm going to add that right along the edge of the darker yellow ink. I'm gonna do the same with the rubber ducky ink. That is the second color in that yellow family. And then I'm gonna follow that up with the lantern light, which is the lightest color in that yellow family. I love the scrapbook.com inks because they are in color families and they always go from light to dark. So when you're looking at the inks, you'll be able to see a number one on the ink if it's the lightest, and then they go into number two, three, and four, with four being the darkest. So if you ever want to do any blending with color families, such as a yellow in this case, using inks that are in a color family are a great choice. So after I ink up that stencil, I'm just going to go back in and add a little bit more of the darker ink towards the center of the sun ray. So right where the heart the outside of that heart is. Just add a little bit darker ink because I wanna have a really nice blend from dark to light. Now I'm gonna come in with the Alabaster Glitter Glaze and I'm just gonna apply it right on top of this stencil. And I'm just using my palette knife to apply it. It's Because it's not colored in any way, it's just gonna apply a nice glitter to all of the rays in this Heart Rays stencil. So once I finish applying that glaze, I'm gonna take my scraper tool and I'm just gonna run it along the stencil to scrape off any of the excess and I'm just gonna put that excess back in the jar. So now you can see all of that beautiful shiny glitter on that background. Next, I'm gonna create a background with a rainbow of colors. So I'm using some more scrapbook.com inks and I'm gonna start out with the Havana Red. This is one of the darkest reds in the red category, so I'm gonna apply that to a few of the rays in this stencil. Then I'm gonna move in to the Lantern Light. When I blend that Lantern Light with the Havana Red, I get a nice orange color. Then I apply the Guacamole, which is the green, and the Postal Blue, which is the blue color. I will come back in with the guacamole just to get a better blend between the green and the blue. And then I will finish off the rest of those rays with my purple color, which is called Mardi Gras. I love that rainbow look on this stencil while using all of those colorful inks. You can see how pretty that is. So once again, I'm going to apply the alabaster glitter glaze right over all of those rays, just using my palette knife to get a nice 
um, application of the glitter glaze and then I'm going to use my scraper tool and just scrape off any of the excess because I can save all of that excess and put it back in the jar. And I want you to notice that that ink did not transfer to the glitter glaze so that's why I was able to put it back in that jar. That's what I love about these scrapbook.com inks is that they can definitely be used with these water-based mediums such as the glitter glaze. So I'm putting my stencil into my paper trimmer and I'm just trimming off the edges just so that the stencil pattern displays on that cardstock. It ends up being about five and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches square. So I also die cut a stitched heart die and this is from a Sunny Studio die set. And next I'm taking a sentiment from that glorious garden stamp set. That was the floral stamp set that I used in the beginning of this video. I'm going to use the sentiment that says sending a cheery hello, but I'm masking off parts of the sentiment because I want it to be on two lines rather than one. So I used some scrapbook.com mint tape and just masked off the word hello, and then I inked up the sending a cheery I removed the tape from the sentiment because it had ink on it and then I just reapplied some fresh tape because I knew that that part of the sentiment that was the word hello, it actually had some ink on it prior and I didn't clean it off very well and I didn't want to get ink on my heart shaped die cut. So I go ahead and stamp down the first part of the stamp that I inked up, which is the sending a cheery portion of that stamp. And then I'm going to take my Raven ink again and I'm just going to ink up that portion of the stamp one more time because I need a little bit of a darker impression. So because I got ink on that mint tape, I just removed the one with the ink on it and then replaced it with a clean piece. And then I'm gonna press down and get a better impression. And then I'm going to move on and ink up the word hello. This time I'm masking off the beginning of the sentiment, inking up the word hello, and then removing the tape that had the ink on it and replacing it with a fresh piece and then stamping that down. And I'm putting the word hello right underneath the words sending a cheery. So that way it's vertical rather than a complete line horizontal like the initial stamp shows. So after I stamp out the sentiment, I go ahead and glue the heart right in the middle, right over top of the heart that was on the stencil. Now you do not have to have a die cut heart to do this. You can just stamp out your sentiment right on the heart on top of the stencil background but I chose to die cut a stitched heart and just add it to the background. I went ahead and added one of the gnomes to the card and then I added this layer card base that measures five and a half inches by five and a half inches. I'm going to add a few sequins to this card front and I'm pulling out some sequins that I have from 28 Lilac Lane. These are the Think Pink sequins, but I'm not using any of the pink ones. I'm actually just pulling out the uh, transparent sequins from this sequin mix and I'm going to add them to my card front. I just love how this card turned out. You can see all of that beautiful glitter from that alabaster glitter glaze over that stencil. So I'm going to go ahead and put a card together using the yellow background. I die cut a circle die from this watercolor orange card stock. I wanted this to look like the sun. So I went ahead and placed that right over top of that heart shape. I did cut the background panel down to fit an A2 size card. I did use a nesting die from Spellbinders to die cut that background. So to finish up my card, I added a gnome from the Gnome Pun Intended stamp set and I fussy cut out a sentiment and added it here off to the right side. I did add some of the silver pops of color from scrapbook.com on each one of the yellow rays just to add a little bit more sparkle and I added that to an A2 size card base. So I love how versatile this stencil is. If you don't want to use the heart shape in the middle, you can replace it with another die cut shape. So that completes that card. So next I want to just show you what the grape glitter glaze looks like when it's applied to white card stock. I'm going to remove the cap and just mix it up really well. I'm going to go ahead and apply this. You can see it does have the purple color. Really, really pretty. This glitter glaze comes in all different colors. 
but again remember you can make your own colors by using that chroma mist like we did in one of the previous cards so here I'm just taking my palette knife putting it all over the rays here on this stencil background and once I have it covering up all of those sections I'm just going to use my scraper tool and smooth that out and pick up any of the excess and put that excess back in the jar so here's a look at what the grape glitter glaze looks like on the white cardstock. It's so pretty. It kind of like has a pinkish tint to it. So here I'm actually going to apply this glitter glaze to colored cardstock. I have a piece of light purple cardstock and I chose to use the light purple cardstock because as you noticed when I stenciled the previous backgrounds, you do have the purple with the glitter glaze on the ray, but then separating the rays, you have the cardstock color. Well, in this case, I wanted the cardstock color to be a light purple. I wanted it to have a color rather than being white. So you can take your glitter glaze and apply it to your colored cardstock. Now, I didn't mention this earlier but you will need to take a heat tool and dry the cardstock before actually making a card with it once you apply your glitter glaze because if you don't it's going to smear the glitter glaze is wet and it will need time to dry so for this background i am using a nesting die from spellbinders to make this into an a2 size card front so i'm just lining up the nesting die so that the heart is in the middle of that A2 size die and then I'm just going to add some mint tape and I'm going to run this through my die cut machine so that gives me my background. Now I'm also going to use this heartfelt wishes die from scrapbook.com which I die cut out of the watercolor paper, the pink watercolor paper and the yellow watercolor paper. I also die cut it out of solid yellow cardstock and I die cut it five times out of the solid yellow cardstock because I'm going to be making a shaker card. I couldn't let this video go by without actually making a shaker card and you guys know how I love to make my shaker cards. So I'm adding one of the yellow hearts to my card panel right where that heart from the stencil is and then I'm adding the inside pieces from the pink watercolor paper and then I'm going to go ahead and add my second yellow heart directly on top of the first yellow heart then I'm going to take my third yellow heart and add it on top of the second yellow heart and I'm going to do the same thing with my fourth yellow heart and add that right on top. So what I'm doing is I'm building the walls of my shaker using cardstock. So here's my fifth yellow heart and I'll add that to the top. So I have five yellow hearts built up so you can see the thick walls that will hold my shaker bits in. Next I'm going to take my heart that I die cut out of the yellow watercolor paper and I'm going to add it to a piece of acetate and then I'm going to just take my scissors and trim the excess acetate around it just to cut it off the edges just so that there's only the acetate inside of the heart. And I'm using my small scrapbook.com 4 inch mini scissors to trim around this just so that I can get a very detailed cut. Next I'm going to add my sequins right inside of the heart. These are the same sequins I used on one of my previous cards. Just add them there. Now if your sequins are thicker you might need to add more cardstock layers to build up your heart. But I only added five layers as you saw me do at the beginning of this card. So I'm going to go ahead and add glue to the top of the yellow cardstock layers and then add my heart with the acetate right on top. There is a stamp set that corresponds to the heart die set. You can actually put the sentiments onto the banner piece that also comes with the die set. And then you can add this directly to the top of the heart. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my sentiment through the banner. But before I just ink it up, I am gonna use my powder tool because I'm gonna be doing some embossing. I am using my clear embossing ink from Brutus Monroe adding that to the sentiment, stamping it down, and then I'm going to add the Raven embossing powder. This is the black embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, and then I'm going to heat set that. I'm just going to add that directly to the banner on the front of that heart. I'm bringing in a stamp set from Sunny Studio Stamps. 
This is the Passionate Penguins stamp set. I went ahead and colored two penguins off camera and I'm adding some of the scrapbook.com foam strips to the back of this one penguin since it's going to be positioned a little bit off of that heart. The heart is actually elevated on the card front. I'm just going to add some foam on the back of that penguin and add a little bow to the top of its head and then add this other penguin up at the top of the banner. I think that's super cute. And then I'm just going to add that to an A2 size card base. And then I'm just going to add some of the hearts from the sequin mix to the front of this card. And that's going to complete this card. I just love how that turned out. So here's another look at some of the cards that I made with some of the products from Brutus Monroe that are available at scrapbook.com. I will have links to all of these products down in the description box below in case you are interested. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more card making inspiration. Thank you so much for watching everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.